This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is an unusual video. I'm going to share with you what are the wrong things one can do when you're trying to save a rexus. In other ways, these are things which are not to be done when you're trying to save a rexus from running off. So let's begin. Now, here is a young trainee surgeon who is uh, attempting rexus in his first intumescent lens. So the rexus is halfway done. So far, so good. And as the rexus is moving along, the rexus is hinting it's trying to run away. The AC is shallowing as is evident by the corneal folds. So the trainee surgeon just comes out, realizes this, pushes in more OVD, rightfully so. Now before the surgeon resumes the rexus with the cystitome, let me pause here and just show you the direction of the tear which is going. Now actually if you just continue the same way, it's heading towards equator now itself. It's very evident. Now this is a very right time to just change the course of the rexus. The surgeon is aware now, he's trying to curb the course and is trying to pull it slightly inside. But the strategy is wrong, although his intention is to pull, but the direction of the tear is still taking it away towards the equator. At this point, the surgeon is finding himself a little bit helpless. Uh, now we can see those couple of desperate strokes trying to pull it towards center, but they're not brave enough. But nevertheless, the surgeon goes back, refills the OVD, which is the right thing to do. Let's see whether the surgeon is successful in retrieving back the rexus. Now, let us be very clear. At this point, it's very much possible to retrieve back the rexus. The rexus tear is still about 2 mm away from the equator. So, it's very easy for us to retrieve it back, provided we use the right technique. Let's find out what happens. Okay, the surgeon has now decided to use a forceps to pull the rexus back in. He's going to try the Dr. Little's maneuver. The thought of using the forceps is alright, but let's see how the implementation is. Okay, there are a few unsuccessful attempts to just grasp the flap first. And eventually the flap is grasped, well, it couldn't be retrieved back. Even though finally they, when the forceps could grasp the flap, well, it was an unsuccessful venture. Eventually the rexus successfully went to the equator. So at this stage, uh, it's very evident that it is gone beyond the point of retrieval. It is headed to the equator. At this point, I would like all of you to just pause the video, rewind back a couple of minutes, and then take a pen and a paper and write down what mistakes did the surgeon do so that the rexus retrieval was unsuccessful. Assuming that you have noted down the point, let me rewind and then show you exactly what happened here. Mistake number one, when you're trying to do the rescue maneuver, which I call the pull-in technique or the what we all know as Dr. Little's maneuver, the point here is the capsular flap has to be flat, not folded, is the number one mistake. The capsule has to be laid flat and not folded. Number two, and with the folded capsule, then the tearing has to be towards the center of the pupil. So you have a brisk and a firm pulling action towards the center of the pupil. That is what is going to rain back in the rexus which was heading towards the equator. Number three, the point of attack could have been different rather than from the main incision. We could have used the side product. Go in with the micro forceps, keep the capsule flat and then pulled in. So if you go back and analyze, probably the understanding of the technique is not clear. What I mean is the concept is not so clear. Because unless and until we keep the capsule flat and then pull it inside, it won't be successful. If you keep it folded like it was then, it's going to run away into the periphery. And second would be when you're attacking, it's always better to find the right angle and not use the main incision, especially when you're not using an OVD which is going to maintain the chamber. So either of the side ports would have been a better deal along with a micro forceps. The change in the angle of attack and the laying of the capsule flat. So these are the, some of the basic principles one need to remember. And of course, this is the first case. And with experience, one can always learn. But my argument here is before even you venture into your first intumescent lens or when you're exposed to a rexus, which is at risk of running away, the concept and the principles should be crystal clear. So you should be ready when you encounter your first rexus runaway. 
these are the steps one has to follow number 1 identify that the rexus is behaving abnormally identify it early number 2 refill the chamber with ovd number 3 identify the right angle of attack number 4 always ensure the capsule is flat and then with the micro forceps or a forceps you just choose the right angle lay the capsule flat and then tear it centripetally that is the direction should be always towards the center of the pupil this invariably helps us to rein in the uh, rexus which is going away so let me take you through a few of my old cases and just reiterate the same points so the first thing is always to diagnose the potential nature of this rexus running away refill the chamber with ovd keep the capsule flat choose the right angle and the right instrument lay the capsule flat not folded then pull it centripetally the rexus is initiated with the needle i am trying to be as slow and controlled as possible i thought it's almost done when she suddenly gives me one jerk and the the tear just goes away well it's quite disappointing to see this and frustrating to be honest i'm not sure whether this rexus can be retrieved now so just want to see it in a better way so i'm injecting cohesive ovd to maintain the chamber please note the position of the cannula as the ovary is being injected it is placed away from the point of capsular opening it's important to ensure that the anti capsule is kept flat and not everted so we don't want the ovary to do, go under the capsule the strategic placement of the cannula and injection of the ovd does help so now we have the anti capsule flat and i can see the edge of the tear it is clear now that the rexus can be retrieved i plan to use the dr brand little's technique of pulling in and i have got three ports to perform this maneuver but let me analyze which port would be better for me uh, to perform this maneuver it's important to avoid the main port as it's going to hinder visualization and with the bigger port ovd can escape out and there might be some shallowing of the anterior chamber which could prove detrimental so i'm choosing the side port on my right hand side this provides comfortable angle of attack excellent visualization and the small port minimizes the escape of ovd The globe is stabilized with a, an instrument and uh, to the other side port I'm using a micro forceps the flap is held flat no attempt is made to avert or fold it then it is pulled centripetally in a swift manner we can see that the direction of the tear changes and comes towards the center now as the tear is under control the flap is folded and the rexus is completed in the usual manner so let's replay and see the footage the globe is appropriately stabilized the flap is kept flat and the forceps engaging the capsule is pulled back towards the center of the eye swiftly in a centripetal direction this firm and quick movement ensures the change in the direction of the tear and eventually it could be pulled back successfully once the rexus is completed rest is the routine stuff So that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful